Take a slight left, then take a slight left. Take a slight left, then take a... In 350 feet, take a slight right, then turn right. Turn left. In a quarter of a mile, turn left on Conyers Road. In 550 feet, turn left on Conyers Road. In 3.3 miles, turn right on Centerville Rosebud Road Southwest. on Centerville Rosebud Road Southwest.
on Centerville Rosebud Road Southwest. In two miles, turn left on Lee Road Southwest. In 150 feet, turn right on Lenora Church Road. In 1.6 miles, turn left on Centerville Rosebud Road. In a mile, turn left on Centerville Rosebud Road. Turn left on Centerville Rosebud Road. In 5.5 miles, stay straight on Annistown Road to Rockbridge Road.
You hear that noise right there? I'm trying to figure if it's that tire. But it sounds it sound like it's your tire or this one. Though. I thought I heard it on the left side, but let me hear I'm it. trying to figure if it's this one or that one. I oh, know so you hear it on the right side? Yeah, but I'm not sure if it's that tire. I'm going to listen for you. All right. I, I, it's break time, but I don't know if it's the rear or the front. I'm going to do it again. I'm listening to this one. That's the signal to tell you the time to buy something. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it, 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 and it doesn't mean it's dire, right? but it is because you got to get new ones anyway, so they try to warn you ahead of time. Right. So That's once it touches that metal, there's only a little bit of brake pad left. And you can stop it, like, like, like yeah, next time, next time, next time I slow down, just listen for it. Let's see if it's your time, uh, I'm going to listen for this one. You hear it? Hold on. Stop it. Oh, Lord. Uh, I was talking. It's, it's very faint now. Yeah, it's just now that we listening, they don't want to act it's up. just now wanting to touch a pair. Yeah. We it, 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 it. I heard what I heard. It's almost this back right one. It's mm -hmm. close to me. It sound like you. Okay. I need rear pads. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's that back right one. Okay. In, 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 my, in my good opinion. That's what I thought too. Definitely. Yeah, very faint, but mm -hmm. it was right here by my door. Thanks. Yes, sir. Good ear, though. 22. Uh, 22. I'm saying good ear, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stay on top of my car. Listen, bro, when you get older, man, ain't nothing. I tell my girl like this, I'm not saying it to you. Ain't nothing sexier than when you're grown. Like nothing really should turn you on more than handling business. Yeah. And staying up on your stuff. When you was a kid, you didn't even like washing your ass. You <laughs> hated doing chores. <laughs> now you should find joy in cleaning your house. All the time. We're working on marriage and stuff like that, so I'm letting her know like, I don't care about sex, beauty. Well, you you, you good to get married? I'm, I'm working on it with her. Uh, so am I. I can't just, I'm letting her know, I'm just not going to commit for a lifetime commitment if it's, if, it's, if it doesn't make sense. Like, she don't like cleaning up. Oh, she no. don't like taking care of her dog. Oh, no. So I don't know if I can put a baby in you. She don't bring you any peace? Uh, what's that? Do you come home and, and, and don't have any peace of mind? You have to look at stuff to yeah, do. A lot of times I don't because she's so dependent and needing affection and, and, and needing like I'm I'm in get closer to God feel mode. So I'm I chose not to have sex. Right. I'm not I'm southern. And uh, she knew that when she got with me. We had sex before when we were friends, but due to complications and things I've been going through, life and death situations, mm -hmm. God has kinda of called me to a greater purpose. Right. So it's like she she gets mad. But listen to the course too. I'm saying. Stay okay. straight on I'm on my I'm good. Get Road. mad at, for the second time. I lost my first one. She passed away. But does when you come home, do you come home to peace? No, because she pressures me about marriage and commitment. And she's not the one. If you I, can't I, come bro, home and, oh my God, and have bro. peace of mind. Oh my God. And it's like we have good times when we go out, you know, this and that, but then it comes down to 
you know, okay, a dude texted her the other day. Mm. Multiple dudes always text her. Right. And they be saying little things like, Ooh, sexy, how you been? And she doesn't never tell them she's in a relationship unless I say something. Yeah. So she, it happened the other day, and then she had to, she felt like she wanted to say something to the dude. I don't never tell her what to do. I just be like, I say, I'm, you know, how I'm old are you, man? Thirty-seven. Okay, guess how old I am. What? I'm sixty-two. Oh man. I was Good, married bro. for thirty-eight years, and now I'm about to get married next year. Serious? Yeah. How long you guys been together? We met uh, last year. Okay. But I wasn't looking for Stay straight on Amazon. God brought her to Rock hey, Richmond. You see what I'm saying? Hey, man. And he'll bring you a woman that brings you peace. Hey, man. The devil got women too that bring you stress. You hey, got to be able to see the difference. The difference between a woman of mm. God and a woman of the devil. Mm. A woman of the devil, you sh got stress. Mm. You got questions. I just questions. ended up in the hospital yesterday. Based upon my stress, because I've had strokes my in my life. You got Based upon stress, my last relationship. And they got motive, and they get exactly. you wrapped up in so some shit. So she texts this dude, having to t because she thought I felt some kind of way, because she don't never t like to text the dude in three quarters that she's in a relationship. A take a slight and she just right on with her, like, You're trying to get in your business. That's not the one. I'm sorry about that. And then, see, when I get home, mm -hmm. she, like, shows me the text message. I told him that I'm in a relationship, mm -mm. but we need to talk about marriage and you mm -mm. giving me more she sex. Trying to press and you giving me more shit. sex and affection. Mm -mm. I was like, wait. I said, you know what path I'm on. Right. I'm trying to be a better person for you. I'm about to buy a house. I got disability money coming. And she's tr she got a job. Yeah, she's been holding it down, and I just kind of handle the, the side things because I can't work because I'm 50% blind. I understand, but here's what I can tell you, my brother. No matter what she's carrying in her pocket, if you come home and you have stress, and you get home, that's the wrong one. She stressed me the other morning, bro. I ended up in the hospital that night. Yeah, it ended up killing you. You can't do nothing with money if you're dead, right? Yeah, broke up and everything. I said, girl, hear, I'm not going to let you throw me off hear, my You hear what I said? You hear what yeah, I said? that's what I'm saying. When you're dead, you I can't do nothing. I said the same other day, bro. All this don't matter if I'm not alive. Right. You said some, you said some real profound stuff. That's, that is exactly They'll what kill I kill mean, you, man. I had a brother-in-law. He went, he went 25 years, and she was sitting back writing a book on the stuff that all the arguments and all the complaints and fights they had <laughs> and turned it in to the uh, police department, got her a lawyer. Cause didn't know what was going on. He, he was sitting there like after 25 like, years of marriage. In half a mile, take a slight right on the east park place out of his own board. house. You're lying, bro. Yeah, he was sitting on the couch watching <laughs> the Falcons game, and the marshal came in and told him he had 15 minutes to get out of his own house. They'll give you sex. Oh my that's God, that's how bro. they get you. Are you serious? They'll give you the sex. That's our weakness, and they use it against us. Anytime they want to take away, they lay on their back. Mm -hmm. And think that's going to make you, that controls your mind. And take you know what? There's some brothers out there that around. let them do it too. I, I really appreciate this conversation because I've been in prayer, bro. Mm -hmm. And I've been in, in prayer. In 850 feet, today, I was turn like, left on Stone, Stone Mountain Highway. But at the end of the day, I'm going back there. I, was, I just left my mom's house. My mama don't want me to go back. Right. But I'm to going me. to go back because all my stuff is there. Right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick it out. But... Your like mama said, know one when she see one. My mama said, get up out of there. She know one when she see one, bro. I'm about to, um, can I open my door real quick? I just want to spit. Go ahead. Just listen to your mom, man. You her child. She gonna <laughs> protect you. Mine and, got one, too. Thank you. And, and, and she said, and take your hand out of the lion's mouth slowly. I had to learn, too, man. Shit, man. I, I, I met my wife in college. I was, I had two girlfriends. Just, just homing. <laughs> and, and just and when God said that's enough, He put her in front of so, me. And so the wife you lost was pretty. It was a good girl. Okay, yeah, woman. and I didn't want to give up being a hoe. And when I met her, and I was in college in my uh, junior going to senior year, and every time I see her, I go that way, and then I go and tell her, everywhere she, if she's going that way, I'm going that way. She's going that way. I, go. I ran. I ran so hard to like, bam. That's how God worked. And everything about her was peaceful. There were no arguments. We had fun. We had kids. We raised a family. I lost my son at 36. Then I, I got a daughter left. She's uh, 38 now. Mm -hmm. But my son and my wife, they've been gone for six years. But what I've learned from my experience is how God worked. He told me that the devil has whores and he got the angels. Mm -hmm. 
there's a difference. And it's crazy in 550 feet, stay straight on Stone Mountain yeah, Highway to US 78, she told me the Georgia truth 10. About her five years of marriage. Wow. She was married before. And I was like, what, did she cheat on you? That's why you left him? She said, no. I stay on him. US I said, 78 why? for 9.7 miles. Because he wasn't miles. affectionate enough. I was like, you're so unfaithful. Right. He wanted, and he was crying and wanting to get help and counseling, and you still left him? They call that being a mule. What? Yeah. I don't Women look at us as product mules. I don't trust you. That man was faithful and with you yeah. there, y'all did parties and went out. He just didn't give you the all the dependence, kissing on you every day type of thing that you require, and you didn't know how to compromise and just get it when you could get it. Even the Bible says, be trying to have sex all the damn time. You spend most of your time in prayer. But don't hold yourself back from your wife or your husband. But God would prefer us to not be so worldly. Right. That really woke me up when she told me that. I was like, so technically, me being with you, I've been in an adultery situation. Yeah. And one full of stress. Always questioning and having questions. That's not the one. Wow, wow, wow. God is good. God answers prayer. I was crying in tears for an answer the other day. And late at night, I was so depressed. And I was crying in tears. And I called my mom. She prayed with me too. day at a time, look at her from a distance, ask yourself, is she stressing me out or is she bringing me peace? And you'll find your answer right there. You could, you could be a friend. I thought it was me, bro. I no. thought I was just dealing with anger and emotions why I'm always snapping kind of older, but it's really her emotional dependency and her emotional Manipulation that she always Right. Does. That's what she's doing. She's trying to control you. She likes spending her money on clothes. And then use other men to make you inferior. Like, exactly. If you don't do what she wants, you're gonna run off. That's, that's exactly. how that's a that's a that's a child of the devil. A child of God bring you peace. You don't have to worry about who she at, who she talking to. I receive it. And you can't run from her because God brought her to you. I receive it. Yeah, that's not the one, bro. I don't care how long it takes or if it even comes. I don't want to die. I ain't going to let you stress me. Right. Just be her friend. Be quiet. If you be quiet, that, it really showed in. Why are you so damn quiet? Why are you so I'm quiet? I'm going to write everything we talked about down in my journal when I get home. If you be quiet, the devil show itself even more. I'm definitely taking that into consideration because I give too much to it. I give to when she up, whatever she's stressing me, I end up blowing. Yeah. And Keep I end up cold. sick. You be like, why are you not talking? Now you know you got a demon. And she consistently is in my ear when I'm just like, let it go. Yeah. Give me space. Yeah. Especially in the morning time. I, I don't do nothing but herbs and listen to music in the morning time. And that's whenever she gets to worrying about me. What are we doing? She want to know where your mind at. Trying to manipulate you. I've, I've never really went to her phone, but the first day that I moved in with her, I thought I was so tired by helping her move all her stuff in and all her mama's stuff out. I wake up and she's going through all my messages, blocked all my good women friends that I've been dating, that I've been talking to for years, from high school and stuff. Blocked them all, deleted the messages, and I didn't even know they were blocked. You cut, off, you cut off all your influences. Shut off all your positive energy. Listen to her, do what she say. They think we stupid, man. Oh, bro, that is satanic, bro. You ain't said no lie. You been speaking the truth. And she doesn't have any woman friends, black or white. All her friends are male black friends. Since I've met her, even now. She just like her mama then. Yeah, her mama's divorced then. Acts like she goes to church but still be holding yeah. around. Yeah. Like I look what she can't get from one, she's gonna get from another. Like I look at her mama drawer, she got all type of condoms, sex toys, and yeah. And it just get weird, like they live in hell, man. They want you in hell. They want to wear makeup for seven days a week. 
never wash it off their face. But now you know what it looks like. That is good, bro. And it's not about trying to judge her. Save your own life. Right. Work out your own soul salvation. All, all I can say, man, is just be her friend. Let her get tired of you. The one, the one God got for you ain't showed up yet. This is my first Caucasian girlfriend. It don't matter what color. You'll know it when you see her because you won't be able to avoid her. When God brings her to you, you can't know. You can't love her. Huh, yeah, you'll know it. She's trying to force me. To man, I had love. two girlfriends when I met my wife. I knew who she was. And you dropped it all. I was running like a motherfucker too. Uh -huh. three miles. Had to give it all up. Because I knew who she was. I knew who she was before I knew her name. And we went 38 years. Then he took her away. Man. He got the angels. The devil got the whores. And God called a good one home. And the good ones are gone. This girl now, I wasn't looking for her. She wasn't looking for me. And we do the same thing. We from the same hometown. We say the same shit. Ordain. Yeah. She be thinking the same thing I be thinking. One time I was singing a song in my head and she was started singing it. I was like, what the fuck? That's what I'm looking for, bro. I'm, I'm willing to be patient and trust God. I definitely, it always seems like God, sometimes when you get into this, in an Uber or something like that, yeah. it be kind of like, Chance well, God send messengers. You just hey, don't know when they come up. Your testimony is saving my life tonight, bro. Yeah. All I'm gonna tell you to do now is to be her friend and keep your mouth closed. Thank you. Thank you, bro. I'm taking, and she'll do the rest. I'm taking that into consideration right now. Those two advices you gave me, I'm gonna live by that until my, until I get my house. Cause I'm about to get a house. Yeah. I got a lot going on, bro. Yeah, she, she banking on that house. Banking on my disability. Yep. Uh, a settlement that I've been two years behind on. And then put you in your grave. Wow. White women do it all the time. They be in a nice ass house. I be like, where your husband at? Oh, he dead. They done worked him like a dog. Worked him right in the ground. Big nice houses. Nothing in there but her. Women to kill you, man. Wow. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. Wow. Just find your peace, man. Find Take your peace of mind. Toward Valley Brook Road, North Druid Hills Road. And she right there. Where, wherever your peace is, that's where your woman at. They stress you out, keep walking. It's more of them than us. In 900 feet, keep right toward Valley Brook Road, North Drew Hills Road, then take a slight right. It's more of them than us. Enjoy your life because you'll be my age before you know it. Take a slight right. God bless you. Mm -hmm. well. In 6.4 miles, stay straight on Roxboro Road to Weaver Road Northeast. Right. Live one day at a time and do what's in front of you. Don't worry about what's, what done happened. Don't worry about what's to come. Just do what's in front of you. Don't worry about tomorrow and don't worry about yesterday because you can't do nothing about neither one of them. Are you a friend? Shut up. Yes. A lot of people worry about what was like back in the day. This did this to me. Don't You, you can't do nothing about what done happened. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about tomorrow. It ain't got here yet. The only thing you're in control of is right now. You feel me? And that's being in the presence of the Lord. When you doing right now, you're in the presence of the Lord. When you go be with the Lord, you don't, you no longer need it here. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing you can do about yesterday. So do what's right now. And then the next thing you know, you have a peaceful life. What I, that's all I, I want, bro. Okay. That's all I want. All I desire. That's what I'm doing. It took me a while, man. When my wife died, it took me uh, it took me a whole year and a half to come outside. 
Bro, I can imagine. Because I couldn't, you ain't gonna find nothing like that. And I couldn't understand why he took her from me. But after a while, my, me and my mom talked. He said, he didn't take her from me. It, from me, it was just her, it was time for her to go. Yeah, he had other things. Yeah. It was time for her to go. Her work was done. Sense. It wasn't a punishment on you. Right. Her work was done. That's why he took her. And your work was not done yet. Right. It took me a long time to understand that. Because to be a virtuous woman is one of the highest qualities in his life, bro. Mm -hmm. She died in my arms watching TV. Bro, don't tell me that, bro. I almost cried, bro. Yeah, man. I would never imagine that, bro. I almost lost my daughter, bro, and that's what really pushed me to the lowest stages in my life, bro. In my arms, man. Having seizures and dying so many times in the hospital, and they have to bring her back. Yeah. All because her evil baby mama poisoned her. Wow. That's messed up. Let I me mean, not even judge calling her evil. But, and then, why well, I say evil, because after she poisoned her, she didn't tell me she was having seizures for four days, took my daughter away, my newborn daughter, mm. away, went to her mom's house. She, slipped her some diet pills because she was trying to get new titties and a BBL wow. after her marriage to make me mad and go fuck on some ballers and stuff. And she kept telling me the whole pregnancy, I can't wait to go get my body done so I can shit on you. You're going to see. You're going to see. So four days, she leave with my daughter. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm like, what's up? What's going on? I've been around back for like two months trying to get, make it work, right? Wow. And she just leaves with my daughter. And then four days after she leaves, she tells me she's been seizuring for the last four days and she's been pumping my four, five, six, and seven day old baby full of water all day. Wow. I said, what are you doing? Even I know you're not supposed to get babies water. And then finally when I get to the hospital, I'm trying to figure things out. Her and her mom are trying to put it on me and lie. And I hear them talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then she actually, her conscience kind of gets at her with me and her brother are sitting in the hospital one of the last days that we were in there. After my daughter went through all this hell, testing, mm -hmm. blood work, all this bullshit, man, for weeks, why we been in here? I lost um, my unbeknownst job. to you, shit going on, you had no clue. She said, I might have I might have had, had some chemicals that did this to her. So when I said, what kind of chemicals? She started lying and getting nervous and then just ignored me. Mm -hmm. And even her brother lies about it now, like he didn't hear her say that. But I'm going for my legitimization to get custody. Okay. But I gotta take my time and I gotta heal, bro, cause that ain't gonna, I'm, if I'm not here, I don't matter. Right. Well, here we are, one day at a time again. Yeah, that's how you get there. Do one thing at a time. That's what I'll do. One thing at a time. Amen. Make your life so And simple. once I figured out everything and I approached her on it, she was about to lie and say I molested my daughter one day. Mm. Right? Because I was putting pressure. I was like, yo, I'm going to get you. And she said, I'm about to call her. She's like, get out. I was like, I'm gonna get out when I'm done. I wash my daughter. Da -da. That's said, evil, I'm, man. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave when I get done feeding my daughter. I was feeding her when she walked in. Wow. And she was evil. And she said something that pissed me off. I was like, yo, just leave me alone. And I did call her a bitch, but I was like, why are you attacking me? And long story short, after she called the police, she's like, I'm gonna tell you, you molested your daughter. I heard wow. 911, how can I, how, what, how, what's your emergency? I jumped up to grab the phone. Mm -hmm. She kicked me in my abdomen. I lost my breath, spit on me, and scratched my face. Dang. And then now I'm just trying to get the phone and keep her off me. Once I get the phone hung up, I, I had stuff there. I just left everything, bro, trying to get out the door. She fought me for 10 minutes, bro. Mm -hmm. Pulled out my hair, and it was a blessing from God that when we, were in, we ended up in the kitchen, her underwear got caught on the drawer. And I was able to get space from her and get to the door. Wow. And she was basically hanging on the wall of the kitchen, kind of stuck with her drawers, stuck on the cabinet, and I was able to get out of there. She called the police anyway mm. and said I beat her ass. When she attacked me, I was just trying to get the hell out of there. Well, she know she know they're gonna look at you. And I did three months, bro, mm. and I got locked up twice in two different counties behind me. That is they happened up, in the cab, man. they locked me up, I violated probation, in Gwinnett, and did almost three months. Mm. And then, finally I had to kiss her ass so she wouldn't go to court and lie on me. Mm. And by the turn. 
You've been through it. I couldn't tell you half of it. After the first time my daughter went to the hospital, she's been five, six times since then due to her negligence. Mm. Not letting me see her. And, and, and then I lost my eyesight mm. with all that stress and bullshit yeah. going on, bro. I feel you. And to kill you. Glad yeah, we met so I can get a word to you. Man, you're a blessing. Man. You're still breathing, so you still have a chance. You're a blessing. I'm going to tell my mom when I get home that mm -hmm. this was a divine. Because I wasn't about to leave. I said, well, I'm going to wait till the morning. So I'm, like, I'm not going back over there if I don't got to. Well, that's how fate is. You can't run from it. Well, he had a message from you, and he works through all of us that believe in him. And you know what? When I listen to my mom and shut the heck up, bro, mm -hmm. things happen way better, bro. Oh, yeah. Your mom, no. She done walked it. She done seen things, and quite naturally, her thing is to, is to hip you to the game before you have to go through it. But some people are hard-headed, you know what I mean? Yeah, all right, that'd be me. Yes, sir. My son was hard-headed, man. I used to tell him, man, I said, man, you got to watch yourself. But he'll still go out there and let them girls. He he wasn't in love. He was in lust. Mm. He liked the way they looked. He mm. liked the makeup and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, bro, that's that shit that dopes you, bro. Yeah. That is dope, Next bro. thing I know, she got the Cadillac. And next thing I know, when she got done with him, she tore up his. I got him a Cadillac for, for graduation. That's what he wanted. When she was done with him, she tore that Cadillac up, man. I mean, she, like trashed it. I mean, wrecked it. Had a spare tire on it. It was classic Cadillac bro. Oh my goodness! She fucked it up. She was using it to be a prostitute. I am done, bro. And unbeknownst to him, she ran using his oh car to be doing God, prostitution, bro. And tore it up. And when she got done with him. She got her place to stay. And when she got her place to stay and got on her feet, she brought that motherfucker home and dropped him off on my porch with no car, no nothing. And she was done with him, you feel me? Lying, bro. No, you're not lying, I'm saying. Bro. Yeah, she was doing things behind his back and he go, I love her, I love her. Yeah, right. He learned a valuable lesson that day. Yeah, he did. But he was hard headed, man. Want to do stuff his way. He always had an idea, and it took him out, man. He stressed himself to to the grave. My son, your son died. My son was thirty six. He had a heart I'm 37, attack. Thirty seven, bro. Your son died, bro. He had a heart attack, bro. The women stressed him bro. to the grave. That's why see? I know there's a mission for my life, cause God has spared me so many times, bro. I ended up butt naked on the, when this when I lost my eyesight. I was mm -hmm. doing this with my baby mama. I was butt naked on the floor, bro, in the bathroom. Don't know how I got there. Wow. Don't, know, don't know how long I was there. I felt two feelings. The first one was bliss, but it was both death. I felt it's like this is death. It was like this is death. The first one was so blissful, I didn't want to come back. I was wow. going to get deeper and deeper. I was like, this is what I want. I don't even want to. I don't want nothing else. It was so greatest feeling. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite switched, and I felt something that I don't think anybody would ever understand if I even put it in a movie it was a feeling of oh my god bro and it was, i was so scared and tormented that i'm a fighter bro like I, i'm a real competitive type you of felt guy. outside of your body i was I, I i didn't even know like i was unconscious so i didn't even know i had a body or nothing it was just nothing but conscious thought mm -hmm. and feelings that i was going through yeah and mm -hmm. when i had that second i felt the second death yo know, it made me jump up out of my unconscious state mm -hmm. and damn near got up so fast I passed out again but like I said I've been a fighter my whole life and I caught the second pass out and that's when I was like I ain't going to that second yeah. death. Some people can't come back to their body. You did. Some people when they die they try to come back but they ain't got a body to come back to. Mm -hmm. You died you're gone and the thing about it when you leave you leave because you leave. You have to leave the body because where you're going, your body is not required. You don't need this body when you leave. You got you gone somewhere else. And whatever life that is, you never know what it is. Now you can't get to the new life knowing what your old life is. I'm so humble, bro. You was almost there. If you your body would have died, you wouldn't have been able to come back. I would have got stuck in that second death. Yep. That is, oh my God, bro. If that's what somebody has to deal with for eternity, if they only knew, they would change up everything. Let me right tell you now. something, man. Let me tell you something happened to me, man. I, I saw my son. I 
about a year after he passed, man. You know how you go to the school and your child is in trouble, you got to go to the principal's office, uh -huh. that little counter? Uh -huh. I was I was in an unconscious state, and I got called to that counter. And it was, I'm looking, I didn't know why I was there, and my son came in there just like a principal's office. He was dressed in black with his dreads and all that. And he was like, Daddy, I fucked up, I fucked up, Daddy, I fucked up. And I was unconsciously conscious, right? I grabbed him, I felt him, I hugged him, I grabbed his hand, I could feel this pulse. And I said, fuck Keep that, come on, let's go. The middle lanes to and I grabbed him, Road to and when I said, come on, let's go, I was back. And he wasn't. And I, I asked my mom about it. That was a vision you had right there? I actually felt him, hugged him. He was like, Daddy, I fucked up. And, and it felt so real. And I knew, I knew, I said, fuck it, let's go. Because I said, I feel him, I got him, let's go. And I said, let's go. And I tried to bring him back with me. But guess what? I had a body to come back to. And then you came back to the real reality. I came back to my body still. and he didn't have one to come back to. Feel me? That's why I was, I was like, where he go? It wasn't that he left, it that I left. What the you feel me? I, I left. God showed you that years before he passed. I left his, I left because I had a body to return to. Hmm. He, he, my son was dead over a year. When I saw, I felt his warmth of the body and everything, and he was trying to explain himself, and I didn't want to hear the shit. I was like, come on, let's go. I, I was conscious enough to say, let's go. I knew he was dead, but I hear I'm holding his and hand. You, you had all this understanding. Of this. At the time, yeah. And I was I, I was like, I ain't trying to hear what he's saying. Come on, let's go. You were trying to bring him back. I was trying to bring him but back. But he had no body. He had no body to come back to. So he couldn't be released. That's why I ended up by myself. That shit tripped me out. That is quite so. He didn't have a body to come back to. And that made me understand. You don't need this in the next life. He didn't have, I cremated him. For real? Yeah. Because he died in Detroit and they wanted me to get a funeral home to process the body in Detroit and then get another funeral home to process the body in Atlanta. It was going to cost me a, a, a bag. So I cremated him and me and him came home on the Greyhound. Yeah, man. He in the house right now. But that night, man, oh, I'll oh, never oh. forget it. I, I actually felt him. I hugged him. Just like if you was right here now. And But I was unconscious, but conscious enough to know to snatch him. Let's go. You know, I'm a New York nigga. I'm like, let's go. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Let's go. Uh, and and to I was the one that left. And that tripped me out. Next life. Think of left. And you thought that maybe you were taking him with you, but then you realized... You didn't take him with you. I said, he went away. And then, no, he didn't go away. You went away. Because I had a body to come back to. And that just blew my mind. It makes sense. He can't come back. Ain't nobody here for him. Life is something, man. And it's short. It is short. My His daughter is, is 19 now. He didn't see graduation. He didn't see none of that shit. Ouch. In 850 feet, like turn left on Peachtree right. Road Northeast. My granddaughter go to Fort Valley State University and he didn't get to see none of that. You did good helping the But I'm just sharing with you what life is all about. Don't let nobody bring you down. Oh, they they didn't come here with you, right? Oh my goodness, bro. They I didn't come here with you. On things right now. And they sure ain't gone when you leave. They're gonna look at your casket. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but yeah, but you stressed me the fuck out while I was here. I got a new outlook right now. Oh yeah, bro. Life is short. You just passing through. So don't waste your time. Just do one thing at a time. Do you wake up and say, I'm gonna do this. Do it. And then tomorrow, do something else and prepare for the next day. Hope, God, you wake up with him. Because when you wake up, you're in the presence of the Lord. When you are not here anymore, you with him. You feel me? You are now with the Lord. And I'm not even a pastor. I got religious people in my family. 
But I done lived it. Yeah, but we're overcome by each other's testimony. Mm -hmm. More than all that, hooping and hollering and speaking in tongues. Yeah. The Bible says you're overcome by testimony. And when people come to you, don't even know me. When I'm relating to you, that's not me talking. That's him talking to you. Through me. You don't even know that your testimony just started me on, a, on, on another new path. Mm -hmm. You're his child. And who better, who, who more powerful than to come through a perfect the stranger fact that your son was to talk to you. Bro, Yeah. And it woke you up, huh? You 37, right? Yeah, man. I Don't give me a kill. That means, you know, in half God a mile, spared me turn right on Stratford Road Northeast. And gave and kept my body here. Because I was really going too, bro. It was, but you were not in charge, you feel me? That's why you didn't go. He, he wasn't ready for it. Just like get people get shot, they don't die. One time. And he ready, he gonna come get you. Till then, live one day, one object, objective at a time. And he'll give you so many chances. Like my son, I think he gave my son a lot of opportunities. And he was like, you know what? <laughs> come on, man. Let's go. My but son. I can see the future. Yeah. He, my son would. You telling them, don't touch it, right? And what he do? Do you touch it? Gonna get burned. That's what my son. Touch it, gonna get burned. And I guess God would like give him chance after chance after chance. And we like, you know, that's my child. I brought him here, but it's still his child. And I believe when he took him, he was like, that's enough. Let's take him on. Before the, things get worse. Yeah. Yeah. And he hurts other people, man. Like I did. Mm -hmm. And I saw him, uh, when the corner opened that bag, man, you you talk about him. Woo! They zipped that son bag open. I'm trying to not even say that's my son, but I saw the birthmark. I saw everything about him. I was like, God, man. That's him. And how did he pass? Like he Heart was, attack. Like he was asleep? I have bits and pieces. The girlfriend tried to fill in the gaps, but it was a heart attack. Man, when I got, no, it was stress. Exactly. It was stress. It was a heart attack. Was he with a good girl at the time? No, no. Oh, she, was, she wasn't a good girl. She was the lady of the night. She'd be oh, on God. Facebook on the strip pole. Oh, God. But that's the kind of women he was with, and they brought, they come with a lot of stress. Oh, God. Turn right on Stratford Road Northeast. Kill them, man. Next right. Yeah, stress kills, brother. Took him right on up, lady. Funny how this whole conversation gets wrapped up with that, and the first thing you asked me was, "Does she stress?" Mm-hmm. Stress took him right on out of there. He had just got a new job and a new place to stay, and the stress was too much to bear. Mm, 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 mm. And I had talked to him three days before he died. Next time I got a phone call, it was the police department oh, in Detroit. He died in Detroit. Yeah, that's where my family from. I had to go up to Detroit, get the body, cremate it, and bring it back home on the ground. What was he doing in Detroit? If he, if he, he got a job at the hospital. Oh, there. oh my God! He got a good job, bro. But he was not ready for Detroit. He was dead in three weeks. What? Yeah. Just after he got the job, he didn't last three weeks. What year was this? 2019. In 600 feet, now. turn left. Then the drop off will be on the left. Okay, what am I doing? Turn the left here? Um, this is just a little bit further down. The and next I can, left. I can get out right on the road because it's that Sky House tall building to the left. Is there a turn right here on the left? Yeah, there's two turns. You can turn I can right pull here. right here? Yeah, you can pull up to the side. I can, I can get you right here. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. the street. This man on my Oh, head. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the entrance right here. I can work my way out. It was good talking to you, my brother. Yeah, no, May you be blessed and get a slow you, heal bro. process. You it hear was me? great talking with you. Wait, What's your one, name, sir? Doug Monroe, man. Doug Monroe, bro. Hey, if you I ever need to, get your name. If you ever need to talk. Thank you for having a car, bro. One day at a time, bro. Thank you for having a car. Man. You're welcome, man. Doug Monroe. Appliance repair? Oh, I love you. Yeah, that's what I do on the oh, side. I, I, I work for appliance repair before. Be blessed, brother. Yes, Do the 
perdeu. Rain, Rani. Ain't gotta do nothing. Get in, start a dry. That's it. The smell. Yeah, he on his way. He on his way back. Shit, it take him two hours there to, uh, two hours to get back. Calm down. And it's running. Big beast. Oh, I didn't even see them pods right there. Hey man, anything I should know about this motherfucker? Cause you know I just be buying shit. But I know you got lights, you got music. You got a uh, trans brake on it, but it's an activation button. Uh, you got a nitrous bottle. Oh, got nitros on this bit? Yeah. It's just for the intercooler though, for the uh, supercharger for the inside of the... Uh, other than that, you got it's Isaac, you know, Isaac. You know, Isaac, yeah. Isaac, right? Isaac, man, I had to come see you, Isaac. He ain't wanna let this motherfucker go. Wait, don't you got something else still? What you got, a Seville? 70? Vert or hardtop? Vert, see, I'ma buy that from him next, guys, when he sell that. Cause I was gonna buy the dump, I was gonna buy the Impala. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I should've bought it from you, bro. I swear. I had just bought my Rolls Royce when you bought, when, you, when I found out you were selling that car, so. Shit, I had spit the bag, but yeah, guys, this is the move for the day, man. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna get the check, and I'm gonna be playing in it later or whatever. We're gonna figure it out, we're gonna figure out what's all going on. I know my, my boy right here, he want to get in and out of shit. He ain't with the talking, he just want to get to the business and get up out of here. It's official. I am now the owner of my second, at least I got the title. I ain't get the title for Mr. 75 yet. I am now the owner of this bad boy right here. It's a bad motherfucker too, boy. Cashed out. Cash money. We trying to talk Marty into getting one. Got us a box. Already got the roof. What you mean? You mean slam back to bed with it, bro? Marty Marsky. <laughs> Who ordered those? Oh, these are the got his boyfriend's on well, today. No boyfriend's nothing. Yeah, it is. These are where the dreams come true. You gotta read what it says. Dreams come true, my boy. No, no, no. Hey, me. Juan, what you think of the purchase, man? Hey, dreams come true, though. Yes. Uh, we got us one. This the one? We got us one. I was a little upset when we heard about you. Yeah. I had to up it, up the price a little bit to get it, yeah. We heard the bad news, I think. Because I told, I was telling. 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 Man, Marty talking third person to himself, bro. Oh, I'm telling y'all, bro. Here, Marty, help him. I was trying to, then he got in my way. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if you can lift it because you're so short. No, I can lift it. You feel me? No, it's in there. A lot of lightning has it, too. That's crazy how it's grooved on the wheel, right? Yeah, I wish one that had a little bit of it. That's all hollow. They made lines. So, why? What, yeah, we got, what we got going on up under here, Mr. Specialist? It's built. This was the first one to be ever be built this with this bigger supercharger. Not the new one, right? Yeah, this is the bigger So this is the first one with that supercharger. That was tested in, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's called a dark or black or something like that. Marty, 
For real, that's what they said. Worst <laughs> tape. You see it on there? No, I'm saying they call the engine dark or black or something. Oh, dark motor? Dark motor, yeah. yeah. Got a whip one. Like the same one you had in your uh, Camaro. Yeah. But not as big. I mean, you already know what it do. From a Camaro. So imagine this one being bigger. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that drive, baby. You didn't even tell them that if this ain't enough, it comes with an extra bottle. For more juice. Mm. I trust. I trust. See, El knows his stuff. That shit out of the yeah, he was telling me about that. <laughs> you want to try that bike route? You want to try that bike route? Man, if they don't this car like he drove the bike Al almost wrecked the bike route. 